Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here back with another episode and the beginning of the month, which usually means it's another time for what is on my beloved iPhone. These are some of the best apps that I've been rocking for the past month. And as always, if you discover any other gems, leave them down below in the comments and I can hopefully check them out. And I'm kind of thinking, I will reward the person with the best app suggestion that features in next month's episode with something from Amazon. I don't know, something cool though, maybe leave another suggestion down below and we'll figure things out as this seems to be a pretty popular series and I guess a lot of people watch it. So it makes sense to reward everyone. And the first app is called Hyperlapse and this one's actually in conjunction with Instagram. I can see this being fully integrated into the app one day. It's currently a standalone and just like the name implies, it is an application to shoot a hyperlapse. So simply launch the app, raise up your cam and hold down the button and it keeps everything stabilized and it usually helps if you have a lot of things moving, hence you can get a good hyperlapse, but I'm hoping this quick recording here, oh, 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 boom. Moving on over to Snapseed and I know a ton of you have asked what is my favorite photo editing app on my iPhone. I still can't find another one that I like more than Snapseed. It's free, you can edit every single photo and every area of it, and the versatility of it makes it, I think, the greatest app ever for photo editing. All of the pics that I usually post on Insta are usually edited within Snapseed, and as I mentioned, the most powerful tool is being able to control certain areas of the photo and fiddling around with the white balance, saturation, brightness in just particular zones. I think that makes it pretty dope, especially for all you hardcore Insta users. Snapseed, please check it out. Switching on over to a couple of games. Now I feel the beginning of the year is always the best time to catch up on some mobile gaming. The first one called Tiny Striker. Soccer is my favorite sport, so I naturally had to download this guy. You are essentially a team and you have to score free kicks to beat another team. So here we go. Here's the dude taking a free kick, trying to bend that goal like Beckham and you have to avoid hitting the wall, have to avoid hitting the goalie. You get coins to collect and there's a timer that counts down and you have to score as many goals as you can. And that little frame up above tells you if you're winning or losing. As the game keeps going, you collect more and more coins to unlock different, say, avatars for your soccer player or different skill sets so you can bend the ball or even shoot the ball harder. Next game is called Origins, and this is from the original Kingdom Rush, which I think I played on my iPad maybe three, three years ago. So it's kind of reliving some memories. This is probably the most expensive game that you'll find on today's episode. I think it was around four to five bucks, which isn't too bad for a tower defense game. And essentially like any game, you just need to build your little towers. And of course, after every level you beat, you can upgrade both your towers and your hero abilities. And maybe the thing I like the most is just the graphics. They're simple, they're cartoony, and I've sadly spent countless hours playing Next game on the list, switching to Final Tap to See. That's a little pun on Final Fantasy, I'm guessing. This kind of reminds me of Maple Story. for any of you have played. You control three different heroes as you go throughout different dungeons, collecting loot and beating all of the enemies in the dungeon. For example, we're in this level right now, and we will simply tap the button, mash the button to attack, nothing too crazy and you upgrade your characters as you go they have different abilities and just the art style really reminds me of that classic 2d side scroller just like maple story which i've also spent countless hours playing as a kid bringing back some memories here next up rabid's crazy rush i can't remember where these characters are from I know this is escaping me, but essentially you are just controlling a little rabbit dude that runs that has to collect soda cans, swiping on the screen to move different directions. You can either jump, go side to side, or slide down to avoid obstacles, and you do have special abilities with your rabbit. Where is this from? Switching to a game which was one dollar. If you want to lose hair, grow white hair, Try this game out, super, super frustrating. It's called Backflip Madness. You essentially have to click three times. The first one to bend the knees, second one at the apex of the jump, and third one to stick the landing. Up, two, three. And the last game on today's list, my friend actually showed this one to me. I don't really have too many words to describe it other than it's a cat game called Nomcat. You eat fish as they come up. Yes, people make games like this. Yes, they seem to do well. 
I don't know why this game is slightly addicting, but once again, it's just one of those weird ones I can't describe. Okay, switching on over to sports. This is called Team Stream from Bleacher Report. So depending on what teams you follow and what sports, for example, I've got mine set up to follow English Premier League, Champions League, and all Toronto teams. So the Jays, the Leafs, and the Raptors. Switching on over to another soccer app, as you know, I'm nuts about soccer. This is called Foot Pack, and if you've played FIFA 17, you know the biggest thing is opening up packs to build your perfect or ultimate team. In this one, you can open unlimited packs and you just essentially create your own ultimate team, something that I also love to spend countless hours doing, just because who doesn't want to create their own ultimate team. Second last one called Headspace, and this one is very different from any app that I've checked out. This is actually based on meditation to kind of control your zen levels. There are 10 different zones that you can go through. I've just had my first 10 minute session and just gives you time to relax, focus on meditating and kind of slowing everything down in this crazy hectic world. Okay, last app on the list is called House. House? And this one actually gives you ideas for not only your house, I've actually used it for ideas for a studio to kind of see what other people are doing. Interior decorating, design, all that good jazz. I mean, some of these houses are just ridiculous, but I guess we all do have goals, house goals, in the end one day. Okay, I think that will wrap up another solid episode of what is on my iPhone for the month of March. And remember, if you found a sweet app, leave it down below in the comments and I'll be rewarding, I guess, my favorite one that I found from your guys' suggestions on the April episode.